going on what is going on youtube hopefully this is working there's no skip outs or anything like that shout outs to everybody here we are in the building oh hold on was it too prepared today it's hot as hell out here to tell you the truth it's hot so what is going on i shouldn't have wore white shoes today this fan is not working i feel I, i'm still gonna pass out it's hot as shit now usually y'all y'all know me i'm like a sound snob right um you know I usually have a lavalier mic on, but today I said no. Let me help you out here. Hopefully it's not skipping out. Hopefully the video is okay. So, um, hopefully you guys are in today's show for the long run. Um, this is Tech Talk Tuesday, um, and I'm going to be talking to you guys about a thousand, thousand plus dollars or more worth of tech, but... You know, I'm just going to, you know, show you all some swanky shit on today's show. You know, a lot of people like to talk about stuff that they don't have, but actually have the stuff that I'm talking about and actually use it. So, you know, today's show is going to be pretty interesting. We're going to be shooting from the hip, as you guys can see. It's hot as hell out here. I got me a nice, you know, uh, smoothie. I think it's kale, mango ginger and lemon real good smoothies but back to what i was saying usually i'll have on a lavalier mic but on today's show i actually have my lavalier mic <laughs> on this stick here which is pretty dope and you can uh turn it on and do all kinds of stuff with it it's actually pretty cool so uh, instead of having a lavalier mic, I got I got it on a stick here. If that means anything. Um, today's show, we're going to be doing a lot of everything. I kind of really don't have no structure. I was just thinking about having so much fun on today's show. It really didn't. It really didn't. Uh, it really didn't hit my mind or come across my mind to say, "Hey, maybe you need the structure." I was like, nah, I just need to do the damn show. <laughs> um, I have a mouse laying somewhere around here that I'm pretty sure now is too late to use. But it's okay, don't trip. Um, I don't know what this shit is falling from the sky, but it's everywhere. And I need to hurry up and do today's show. And... Um, And I have it get all over my equipment. Outside will fuck up your equipment. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's hot. It's fucking like 90, maybe 80 something degrees. And uh, the monitor that I'm looking at and my camera, it looks like it's not having a fun time in the sun. So, uh, I do need to, like, do today's show for a lot of reasons. But we're chilling, man. We're having fun, you know. Um, Shout outs to everybody that um, wished me well uh, while I had COVID-19. Definitely a couple days ago, I wouldn't be able to do stuff like this. Like, I'm sweating. I don't know why I wore a white shirt today. You know it's hot when you have, like, upper lip sweat. You know, when you got the upper lip sweat. I don't shave my mustache really down. So now I got upper lip sweat. Shit, it, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm good, but I'm fucked up in the game right now. You know what I'm saying? But um, make sure you guys... And there goes the cantaloupe. It's not good to eat while you're recording, but we all dealt with worse. But let's talk about it. On social media, a lot of people, they don't care about their sound. They don't care about tech. They don't really care about equipment and stuff like that. Cool, you know? But... On social media, I shouldn't have opened up this fruit. On social media, a lot of people do. And sometimes, when you do tech shows or something, 
or you talk about something, you try to help people out, you come off as a bit of a snob. There were these guys that had a show. And Banjo, if you watch it, you could probably comment down in the comment section. Um, they had plosive problems. Whereas, like, you know, while I'm, while I'm talking to you guys right now, I see a little bit of my uh, stuff going into the red, but it's not that bad. So they have plosive problems. And the plosive problems comes from, like, saying peas, like Paul picks up pizza pronto, parody, uh, please play with Pauly. Uh, there's so many different, uh, uh, you know, plosives tests that you can, um, that, you know, you can, you can do. And there's a lot of things in the audio industry that stops plosives. You know, plosives can actually really mess up a recording. Like if you're, like imagine if you're listening to a song, you're listening to a song and a plosives pop out. Like, and really it's like a, it's like a, it, it basically pops. So you get something what's called a pop filter. You know, it helps eliminate the plosives. Or you can get something like what's on this microphone right here, kind of protecting it from a bunch of things called a windscreen. And um, this also helps kind of protect it from plosives. Or if it's windy out here, you guys may be able to hear the wind and some other things, you know. You guys might even be able to hear this fan right here or that dog, that, that dog that's barking. So, you know, certain microphones are sensitive. And when you say anything with P in it, it might pick it up. I think I also see some of my plosives coming through. Wouldn't it be fucked up for me to tell y'all about plosives? And, you know. Anyway. I'm going to have a very, very, very interesting show today. So. Shout outs to everybody that's here. I wanted to have I wanted to have like a a, a multi camera view uh today. But I just said no, let's just do one camera and let's shoot. And I've been messing around with uh my setup and um a bunch of different things that I would like to try. Uh, when it comes down to, you know, just shooting, um, having multi-cameras, and um, just, you know, basically, you know, um, capturing audio and stuff like that. Your audio is always going to be more important than, you know, um, than your visuals. When you do audio and visuals, a lot of times it gives you a second chance it gives you a second chance to uh, to mess up. And what I mean by messing up is now, you know, you got video and you got audio. And now, you know, on YouTube, you know, you got, uh, I got wasps and stuff around me. But now on YouTube, you have something called streaming. And the thing is, is that you're streaming in real time. And when you're streaming in real time, you have more um, you have more uh, you have more of an opportunity to mess up in real time. And what I mean by messing up in real time is, you know, um, when you add visuals and video, you have to make sure what you're saying is matching it as you're saying you, as you're saying it. You don't want to have like a one of them old Chinese films. It's like Shu Sheng. And then two seconds later, he says, he, he, you know, he does something. You want to make sure what you're saying is actually matching it while you're saying it. You don't want to have a, uh, a latency. You don't want to have like a delay. You know, when you say something, you want to say something. And even if you do have latency or you have like a delay, you don't want it to be very far off. You know, so the seconds do count. When you know that you're shooting something and, you know, there's a, you know, there's a slight delay in what you're shooting. So what am I talking about? Well, when we talk about uh, uh, film, audio, production, podcasting, all of these different things, you know, nowadays they can range from A to Z. And like I said, we're living in the days now where you're actually streaming 
So it's not like I can shoot a video and if my audio is off, I have to go back and edit it. Some people do and they do like the snap or the clap. And then when they get the snap or the clap on um, on on track and they and they drag their audio bar, you know, then everything else should be good from that point on. But when you're streaming and you have a setup, shout outs to Red Supreme. I saw that kind of happen to him earlier today. I got I got a lot of uh, I got I got I got to have a conversation with the Red. If you watching this, man, hey, email me, text me, do something. You know what I'm saying? If you can. But. Like I said, you know, you want to, um, you want, you don't, you don't want to have those problems when you're live, that your audio is off from your actual visual, you know, it's not, it's not really good. And, um, the camera that I'm shooting on is pretty good. Um, it's 4k, but what you're going to see is 1080p because the, uh, the, the, the program that I'm using right now or the, uh, the encoder that I'm using right now. It only goes up to 1080p. And that's fine. You know, when you guys are out here getting these cameras and things like that, trust me, I know what I'm talking about. You don't really want to go for the 4K all the time. You actually want to shoot for 1080p. If it's high res 1080p, that's good. But you don't really want to go for 4K. A lot of companies and uh, 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 people that market stuff, you know, they've, they've made a lot of money. Just by putting that on their cameras. But usually when you put it on YouTube or something like that, it might not come out as 4K. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes if you got a cell phone or something like that, you know, you know, a cell phone that got, God damn, that's why this thing was hot. My light was on. When you have a, uh, when you have a cell phone, you know what I'm saying, that got, you know, multiple multiple cameras and different things on it you know because this cell phone got like you know this cell phone can shoot in 4k this cell phone you know a lot of these even a lot of the uh phones from two three years ago they they still do like 1080p you know what i'm saying so sometimes too you might want to look into some of these apps and using your phone as your camera but the thing is is that you want to have professional sound also so what I'm saying is, in a lot of cases, you want to be able to run your audio into your camera or, or you want to be able to have no problems with, with audio and your camera, you know. Um, I'm telling you, work on your audio first is way more important um, instead of, instead of uh, your camera, you know. It makes no sense. People will look up, people will look at, uh, at, at, at you know uh bad looking videos bad resolution videos but what they're not going to do is listen to messed up audio so make sure audio is your priority before you start moving on to cameras um a lot of these cameras i want to show y'all some stuff too you know you got to learn how to run you got to learn how to run audio into a lot of these cameras and not all of them. Some are going to be easier than others. And some might not be easier than others. Because, you know, it's easy for me to run a run audio into this camera. And what I mean by run audio into the camera is sometimes the camera is good. But the audio on the camera is not good. And you need to bypass that audio with any other source that you can run into that camera. So what I'm saying is that, you know, you have to... You have to know what you're doing to a certain degree. And that's what I was telling you guys about latency and, um, and you know, I was telling you guys about latency and basically how long it takes, you know, for the camera to sync with your audio if you're having those issues. Okay. Now the cameras, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you guys a, uh, a cool camera that I just uh, got hip to. Um, you know, it's hot. And just a minute ago, I was actually in the shade. I was in the shade and I was real hot because this pole is hot that I'm holding. No homo. But let's get into it. The cameras that I'm, that I'm used to are uh, GoPro. And I like GoPro cameras. Now, they're very expensive. Customer service is trash. Um, 
if you get one, take care of it. Or if you got a little bit of money to throw away, I would tell you guys to go get one. Shout outs to Mace. Mace was asking me about uh, which GoPro to get. What's a good GoPro? Um, these should be fairly cheap now. When I first started podcasting, they were very expensive. They were in the 400s and stuff. This is, and I'll come up and show you guys. Because I don't want people to be like, man, he got a, he got a, 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 a dummy, <laughs> a dummy uh, GoPro. Let me show you guys. So this right here. Is the GoPro uh, Hero 7. And I need to uh, clean mines, obviously. And um, it's it's awesome. I like it. It's in its cage and stuff like that. Really good camera. Also, this is the last GoPro where you can actually replace this lens right here. You can turn it sideways and take it off and replace the lens. GoPros, they they they're awesome. Really great camera, you know. Um, this thing it shoots in 4K. It has a uh, st stabilization, image stabilization, which means you can run with it. And you see how the camera will be bouncing this way when you're running. When you're running with it, it'll just be smooth. It won't. It won't. It won't be bouncing around. So it's a really great action camera, like if you're on a bike or a skateboard or something like that, and you want to capture something. If you look at some of my videos too, um, I've uh, you know, I've literally uh, captured uh, me on on the one wheel. Actually, I was on the one wheel, and uh, this was the camera that I was using in the beginning, and um, it was pretty good. You know, captured under the one wheel, did a whole bunch of different stuff. Really dope camera. You know what I'm saying? And uh, this is my other one, which is cracked, and I need to fix it. If you guys can see that, there's a huge crack right there. But this is not in the lens. These are actually, these are actually, and, they're, and you can go underwater with them. But these, actually, you could take them off. And then, you know, you have your, your lens right here, but then put it back on, and you have your GoPro. This right here is the GoPro Max. This is the Max. You understand what I'm saying? This right here, 360 camera. You understand what I'm saying? You got a, you got a front, you got a back. You know what I'm saying? So, and this got about five different, uh, five different, five different microphones in it. But I still would like to bypass it with what I'm doing. But really great cameras you know what I'm saying um, the screens on these things same thing with the uh, with the hero 7 you know the resolution is nice you understand what I'm saying touch screen all kinds of different stuff you know we, we do we do this over here you know this isn't this isn't this isn't for uh, for play play so I'm acquainted with nice cameras you know, this thing can shoot in 5.4K. You understand what I'm saying? 360 video. Get everything all around us. Really great camera. Actually, you can go live on YouTube with these cameras also. They got an app that comes with it. And you can go live. You can monitor everything. Really beautiful camera. Now, also, I'll show you guys a bunch of different things. Now, this is the uh, P4, which I which I tell you guys, this is really good for podcasting. One of my favorite, and I got to clean this also. One of my favorite items with the Pod Track 4. You know, you can actually do more with these things. I'm starting to learn, or I've known for a while, but I'm starting to learn how to really freak out and trick out a lot of my tech. You can use, oh man, I got to clean this thing. You can, um, because I use the other Zoom recorders like the H, the H6 or the H8. And um, really great recorders, 
those are the, those recorders. Sometimes they they come with what's called a, a hot a hot sh a hot shoe or a hot mount or whatever, and you can hook them on top of the cameras and run the audio into the cameras, like how I'm running the audio into the camera right now. But that with that thing, you can introduce sound like music and songs and stuff. We'll get to that later in today's podcast. The music wise, I'm kind of showing y'all what I want to talk about today. And I've actually been using this. This thing has enough gain on it. Um, you can do a lot with it. But these right here, these these are basically for headphones. But they also can be used as an output to run into your cameras. Those GoPros, I have to find a way to bypass the audio on those and run something like this. Or the microphone that I'm using right now like that into you know those cameras to get clear clean audio and I was scouring the internet one day and I thought I found the solution because I found something zoom is really good for their audio they're really good with their recorders and stuff like that zoom is really trusted I also like this company called Tascam but I never really got like Tascam you know, I, I, they never really, you know, they got some good stuff, but it, they're not as innovative as Zoom with their recorders and stuff like that. Really good stuff. Maybe, I, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm not. We're going we're gonna to try some of that stuff, but, you know, make sure you hit that cash app. Support the channel. Never know. I might start doing Tascam stuff. I don't want to offend any Tascam fans. But this is what I'm saying. Um, Zoom is dope. Now, I found a special Zoom, guys, because I didn't know Zoom did this. And I think Zoom is still new at doing this. So, I found this thing. I found this thing right here. This is a Zoom camera. I did not know Zoom makes cameras. This is a 4-2, no, this is a Q2N, but it's 4K. Now, the conversation that I had with you guys prior to this, we're going to have to sit down for this one. Ooh, I need that, I need that, that breeze, baby. We're going to have to sit down for this one, okay? Y'all... I found a zoom camera. Now granted, I didn't know zoom makes cameras. I don't think zoom knows zooms make cameras. But when you get money, sometimes you have a little bit of money to do like little experimentations and stuff like that. Um, so many people trust zoom. For their audio, it makes sense for Zoom to say, hey, let's make a camera. So there was one before this, but it wasn't 4K. And this thing here, this thing here, I want to like it. I haven't used it the way I needed to use it. And I haven't really checked out what it can do. But later on when i'm telling you guys what i want to do and showing you guys what i want to do um i have a video for you so this thing has a good microphone because like i said zoom is known for their audio but it says that it shoots in 4k and i think it's 30 fps frames per second you got 30 and you got 60 you got 24 you got all kinds of but the main ones you, you guys really want to know is 30 or 60 but one thing also that I see that it has let me show you guys I really wanna you know lay emphasis on what I'm talking about is right here it has a headphone slot and it has an audio in slot now they say that the the microphones on this Zoom is very good. It's exceptional. They said it's really good. And um 
I haven't really shot with it. Now, granted, with the GoPro, it had all the bells and whistles on the front. Like, when I turned the GoPro on, the screen that, I, that, that you see on the GoPro, it doesn't show literally 4K, even though it's a high-quality screen. You can definitely kind of see, you know, what you're doing with the screen on the GoPro, you know, touch screen and everything. But the thing that I that kind of rubbed me wrong about this and I could be wrong because I actually have to shoot something with it and then see what I'm dealing with with the final product once I upload it to YouTube or whatever I'm doing. So we're going to we're going to do that in a later show and see if it comes out good. Now what turned me off about this is because I've been spoiled because I have used the GoPro and oh boy, do I use the GoPro. Um, when you turn this thing on, it makes this weird noise and then it shows you, you know, 4K, Q2N. And it shows you, you know, you know, it shows you, you know, what's going on. The screen and everything. You get the, the green light and stuff. But the resolution on the screen that is showing you it looks weird it doesn't look nice like the GoPro you can hear your audio and you can actually see the levels and everything but it tells you how much the SD card has on it it tells you if you're shooting in uh, you know uh, 4k how much frames per second and stuff so I will have to do a video with it and show you guys so I want to do uh, live music on the live. And that will require me to run the audio from the music into the camera. So you guys can get the audio and you guys can get the visuals that I'm doing. And I'm thinking that this might be the answer to that if the video is good. Now, they say the audio on this camera is great for vlogging and doing stuff like that. I wouldn't run with it. I know it doesn't have stabilization and stuff like that. I also was thinking about incorporating this camera into the setup that I have right now, where, where I'm shooting right now. And the only thing that really excites me, really, is the audio jack in. So that way, I can probably just bypass the audio on here, even though it is actually good. And do what I may need to do. That could be a thing. So we'll check more on that a little bit later. Okay. Now I know I'm looking crazy. Sideburns huge as hell. It's hot out here. Don't trip though. Now. Let's get into the next part of the tech show. Because it goes back into the problem that I was telling you guys earlier. I need to figure out how I'm going to run audio into the cameras so I can have a... Uh, A successful live show and I can do I can do more lives for you guys pertaining to music so I've been educating myself and I've been learning a whole bunch of things yes I am using it as a bookmark don't say shit to me this is a six hundred dollar bookmark <laughs> yes this is an OPZ used as a bookmark <laughs> I bought this book here from Amy Hewitt how to program any synthesizer and it's funny I'm using a six hundred dollar synthesizer from Teenage Engineering which is the OPZ as a bookmark 
I like the OPZ. Really great. Actually, I did a trick with the OPZ and figured out how to turn on the backlight. So I could definitely use it because it lights up. Now, the OPZ, and I should have zoomed out so you guys could see what it was. Hold on. Let me do this again. I'll just talk to you guys about it. The OPZ, and this is the book right here. My bad. You guys couldn't see it before. How to program any synthesizer. And look, it got a Moog or a Moog, whatever you want to call it. OPZ. Really beautiful synthesizer. About $600. As a matter of fact, it was really my first synthesizer. Looks like a remote. Doesn't come with a, uh, doesn't come with a, um, a screen, by the way. And I'll tell you guys, I'll show you guys that because I got the OP-1 over there. But uh, really beautiful synthesizer. Uh, you can do a lot with it. It has a, a remote. It has a microphone in it. You, you can just do so much with it. Like, this thing is just awesome. People are doing things with these OPZs daily. And here I am using it as a bookmark on a how to use a synthesizer book. Ain't that funny? But my dilemma, y'all, is to capture great audio and be able to do a live show with it you know be able to do things with it and um and be able to perform for you guys so i got so much tech out here it's ridiculous so where do i start antelope antelope so I'm getting into making beats, right? In the midst of uh, showing and telling you guys about what I'm doing in my endeavors when it comes down to audio and when it comes down to, uh, you know, doing live shows and things like that. I guess I'm vlogging right now. And um, I'm good on studios, you know? I'm an artist. I need to create, you know. Studios are a tool, and I'm learning how to use them very wisely. Because nowadays it's different. Nowadays, people got home studios. Nowadays, you can do anything at home, really. And you've always could, but pa the pandemic really showed you that, yeah, no, now you really can, you know. So... And this thing is hot as hell. So I'm almost dying, really, to give you all this content. Um, I wanted to change up the format for the podcast. And I also wanted to change up the format uh, for, you know, uh, basically the studio. Basically my sound. I wanted to have, you know, this thing dedicated to this show. And something dedicated to another show. So I bought what's called the Zen Go and the Zen Go let me zoom out that's why you need an editor or another cameraman I'll be forgetting this shit the Zen Go is awesome it's an interface uh, you can do a lot of stuff with it and it also comes with software you know what I'm saying? It also comes with software. Um, I've been having this hissing problem with my interfaces, and I didn't know why. And the hissing problem, you know, because I'm going to be doing ambient music also than, you know, doing regular music. I'm going to be working with synthesizers and stuff like that and guitar pedals. We'll get into that later. And I bought this antelope right here. And I got to clean it and stuff. But I'm not keeping this unit right here. I'm actually sending it back for another unit that I saw that was about $500 also, which was good. And this is their smallest one called the Zen Go. And it has the 64-bit uh, active focused central processing. I don't know. It has like it, it, it has thousands of dollars worth of technology in it. 
And I wanted to be able to do a show where I can every once in a while speak to you guys. And then, you know, also uh, play the instrument. So if I'm demonstrating something, I can, I, can, I can talk to you guys and show you guys what I'm doing exactly, right? So I, I needed something that has two inputs. And this thing has two inputs. And it comes with software. And it's nice. And it got the bells and whistles. And you can put on auto-tune. You can do a whole bunch of things. You can run guitars in it. And it and it comes with way more channels and, and some other stuff. But guess what? When I plugged in something in it, it only came up on the left ear. And then when I plugged something in the other one, that came up on the right ear. And I got mad at that. And I was like, okay... I want to have stereo sound because when I'm playing ambient noise, I don't want to have it mono. I don't, you know, even on a podcast, I don't like mono. I don't like, I want the sounds to be coming from all over. I want you guys to be able to hear things. I want you guys to wear quality headphones so when you hear certain things, you're like, okay, I'm listening to something good, something special. Not saying mono's not special, but it doesn't have that effect where it's the left and right ear thing going on, right? So then I learned how to link both channels together to kind of do the left and the right ear thing, but it wasn't what I wanted. Then I saw something else, and it was around the same price, and I spoke to my dealer, and she said, you can switch it out. And I said, cool. But I don't want to, um, and this thing has Synergy Core, has a Synergy Core, but I don't want to completely shit on Antelope because they're they're a very great company. Um, also, my output would be right here or either right here for monitors. And then it has a spit if, you know, got a whole bunch of different things. Really cool, uh, you know, interface. But sadly, and I rarely ever, you know, I just buy stuff. I don't I don't really give it back. But sadly, it's not what I want. You know what I'm saying? And $500 is a lot of money to fork over to kind of pay for something that you might not want. It happens. Now, let me know if you guys are getting sun glare because I'm getting a glare from my thing. But it looks okay when I get to it. I don't know. So, this is what I'm saying. Music is like a rabbit hole. You can get sucked into a lot of different things. Like, for example, if you guys have been watching the show, and what is this shit that is raining on me? If you guys have been listening to the show up until this point, I got a gem for you, especially for the music guys, tech-wise. Um, I think I did. So... When I started getting into music and I started getting into like uh, synthesizers and beat making and stuff like that, I spent like $600 on that uh, OPZ. It looks like a little remote. Now, that thing's a powerful little machine, you know. Teenage Engineering did their, uh, did their, did their, did a great job with that machine. Also, they did a great job with this machine. This is the OP-1. This is the bigger version of... Uh, God damn it. Hold on, y'all. This is the bigger version of uh, the OPZ. Hold on. Now, these... Are two different machines okay they're similar made from the same company but two different machines this OPZ right here it's it's awesome you know it's a uh, great it does it, it actually it, this is a whole production studio right here you know um, to tell you the truth and it's just a beautiful piece of machinery, but it's expensive. They said when it came out, it was like $800. You can really produce whole songs with it. But then the price went up. You know, um, it, it's like, it was like 1000 
300 or 400, 1,399 or something like that. Because um, they, the, the company, I think it's, I don't, I don't know if it's Sweden or Swiss. I, I'm, I'm fucking up on today's show. But look, the, comp- the company was going out of business. And there's no structure in today's show, by the way. The company was going out of business. And what happened was they couldn't produce these because the company that was producing their screens, they, they I guess they couldn't buy them or that company went out of business. And they had to start buying their screens from elsewhere. But the quality started going down. So then the company was kind of, it's a very small company. So they were like going out of business. And on the way out, they produced the OPZ. Which kind of saved it. But the thing is, is that when they stopped making these, the price of these went up. And they saw people buying these for like seven grand. People pay 7000 for this. And there's artists that use this like Tame Impala, um, Childish Gambino. There's a lot of artists that use this machine right here. And um, recently, thank God, you know, the company... Has been just putting out and shit. We didn't even get into we didn't even get into pocket operators yet. The company's just been putting out gems and the modular stuff. I'm gonna get into the modular stuff too, but they just been putting out gems. And um, the OPZ is a gem. This is a gem. They started producing these again. And as a matter of fact, this just had its 10 year anniversary, and I'm mad as hell because I paid the damn near 1400 for this, and then the shit went down to 1100. I got mad as hell. Now, shout outs to my boy, Dusty. He was like, you know, and I understand because Dusty, he produces hip hop. So he was like, yo, Kuda, why don't you just go get that MPC one that just came out? See, because my stupid ass, I seen the MPC one and it looked cool. But I was like, you know what? I, I kind of want to do the 80s thing. And I and I did want to make beats also. I was going to get the MPC one. But not as quick as I did. And I'm glad I did because it actually went up like 100 or 200 bucks. And then they got a retro one that just came out. And the thing is is that the MPC one is supposed to be like the baby MPC. Where uh, where like if you're getting into beat making or something like that. You know, um, it's really supposed to be a lot of people's introduction into the MPC universe. And... Um, It's really good. It's, it's 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 nice, you know, the MPC one, you can plug it in and um it's like 6 700 bucks now. I think 800. And um it's just good. Like you like literally you can do everything you can do on every MPC with the MPC one. It's actually a steal for the price because they have portable ones like the mpc live the mpc live 2 that actually comes with a speaker and stuff like that and the thing about tech is that hardware damn there never changes software changes they do a lot of updates now so sometimes you'll pay the price for something and then when they update it, it turns into a whole completely different machine, which is great. But one thing that they had a problem with the MPC-1 was that it wasn't portable. What is the MPC-1? Well, I'm glad you asked. I have one right here. Now, I need to clean this thing. But this and, and, some, and some watermelon done spilt on it but thank god god damn it thank god i have uh the screen protector on it there's nothing but hair on it so i come show it to y'all don't don't sometimes you gotta spit sign shit y'all anyway i'm getting my hand prints all over the screen I don't have my cloth with me that I usually wipe my stuff off, but it's still got the screen thing on it. But let me show you this MPC-1 real quick. My bad. I had to spit shine. I had to clean it. Let me show you this MPC-1 real quick. So this is the MPC-1. Really nice, uh, you know, device. You got your headphone jack down there. You got all the stuff that you can plug into it right here. 
You got Midi out, Midi in. So if you want to be the brainchild of what you got going on. You got your pads right here, which are a lot smaller. And it just it has a retro look. But the problem with this thing is that you have to plug it in. That's the problem. It's so small, it could be portable, but you got to plug it in. Or do you? Do you have to plug it in? Well, yeah, you can plug it in. But it depends on what you want to plug it into. So let me show you guys a solution that I came up with. Which was pretty cool. Now, this ain't no MPC Live. Which costs like a thousand something. This is not a, definitely not an MPC Touch 2. Which costs like a thousand something. This is an MPC Une. MPC Uno. MPC One. And I should have put it in this bag. That got shit all in the bag. But this is the MPC One. Now if y'all can see. I put some Velcro. Right here on the side of this MPC One. Now why did I put Velcro. On the side of my MPC One. I'll show you. Because. I got this. Now, I seen a guy, and, um, hold on, y'all. I seen a guy, and I got to, I got to fix this thing right here, y'all. Give me one second. So, like I said. Jesus Christ. Hold on, y'all. I seen a guy, right? And, um, he had gotten his MPC. He, he, he did the battery thing. This is a battery, basically, right? And his battery, his was like 40 bucks. His battery was like $40. $40, right? $40. His battery was like $40. And, um, yeah, it worked well. He did a, uh, he did a nice, you know, uh, show on it. This battery is like 86 bucks, but it can power a lot of different things. And when you hook, like, something like your MPC into, like, a, a, a portable battery, you want to make sure that it's uh, supplying the right voltage to power the unit. You don't want to destroy your MPC I'm trying to make it portable. So, um, and I don't know how hot this thing gets, but it doesn't, it hasn't gotten hot since I had it, which is for like a couple days. But I put the Velcro on the back of this, and what I did is the charging port that you can use for it, I took that, which is double ways. And I plug this into here, right? And after I plug this thing into here, because this thing will show you the battery. See, it cuts on, it turns blue, and the battery percentage is at 99%. And for some reason, it's kicking out 20 volts. I know it kicks up to like 160 or 190 so far. Ooh, a mosquito got me, y'all. Almost that time. So... I take this MPC right here, right? And I take this battery right here and I put it on the Velcro. So that way, this battery is on side of the MPC. And I take this cord that I had on the battery and I run that into the MPC like so, right? And for some reason, and I press power here, and then I press the power on the MPC. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, uh. what's going on? Hold on. Oh, look, it cuts on. Well, you can't really see the light and everything. You can just see the glare. But this MPC is on, y'all. It's on. I don't know if you guys can see it. There you go. And then you got the touch screen. And all you really need is uh 
your headphones and you can take it wherever you want to I can go wherever I want and make beats everywhere now the MPC one is portable and all you needed was a battery and some velcro <laughs> some really strong velcro MPC one portable isn't that awesome I think it's awesome I can sit back right here now on a hot day and I can I can jam out and make some beats now the only thing this thing doesn't have and the only thing is missing at this point now that uh, I made it uh, I made it uh, you know portable which maybe it could come in an update or something is Wi-Fi I mean you can run an Ethernet into it Ooh, I'm burping and shit. You can run an Ethernet into it. But the only thing it's really missing is... Is Wi-Fi. This is a computer in the box also. Because it's all standalone. So... The reason why things are standalone... Is so that it's dollless. You don't have to use a computer. But in some cases, it's good to use a computer. But the reason... The selling point for these synthesizers... Or these, uh, you know these these different machines is that they're dollless and dollless means that you don't have to use a computer very interesting all right this thing is getting on my nerves hold on y'all So, it, 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 gets pr it gets pretty interesting. You know? Let me actually put this in the box. Because I gotta send it back, y'all. I gotta send it back. I gotta send this bad boy back. The antelope is good. It's just... And I might buy one again. Later on. It's, it's just... Not what I'm looking for. Not what I'm looking for at the moment. And I'm learning that that's okay. You get something else. You understand? So, that's that on that. But it is awesome. I'm, I'm pretty sure it is awesome. I'm pretty sure you can, um, you can uh, run your guitars through it. And get a great sound out of it. Pretty dope stuff. I want to have my equipment really out in the open like this. So let me put these in their bags. So I done showed y'all thousands of, I done showed y'all shit. Probably a whole bunch, like probably five grand worth of equipment. What did we learn on today's show? Absolutely nothing. This is pitiful. It is hot out here. I'm dying. Hit the cash app. Let me stop. <laughs> so, getting all of these, getting all of this equipment. Doing shows. It's been fun. Having all of this audio stuff, fun. Having an easy way to route it, no hissing, no background noise. Because it happens even in this stream. Like when I plug, I don't know if this is going to work. I'm about, I'm going to plug something in and patch it in. And it's going to have this hissing noise. It happens all the time. Like when I, when I do the videos, they start off really good and then... It happens all the time. Like, for now, like, I don't even know. This thing could be skipping around. And I won't know until I take a look at it. And produce it. So let me stop whining. And tell you guys what we about to do. I don't know how this shit gonna sound. I don't know how it's gonna be. But god damn, this thing is hot. This is my guitar, y'all. We're gonna talk about it. So, 
I like guitar pedals. I've been falling for guitar pedals. I don't know what I want to do, y'all. I don't know if I want to create ambient music. I don't know if I want to create synth. I don't know if I'm going to use this NPC and create hip hop. I'm kind of in an artist bubble. Like I'm, 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 I'm in a. Uh, I guess I'm suffering from uh, artist, not even writers, artist block. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't know what I want to do. But I know that I have all the tools to do them all. And I've done them all. Which is the crazy part. And I made a mistake. Uh, not a mistake. I made a decision that I want to do it all. Because I can. So I got this pedal. Oh, that's awesome. And if you're anybody that's anybody that knows anything about pedals, you should know this pedal or should get one. This is called the Microcosm. Showed y'all this pedal before. About to show it to y'all again. This thing is a beast. When it comes to ambient sound, noise, and everything. This right here, this is my baby. This right here is going to be the heart or should be the heart of any operation you got going on. This is my secret weapon here. Awesome, ain't it? Now, I'm going to plug this thing in and attempt to patch it in. On the outro of this show. And I'm going to play my Artifon. There. I think I paid about three or six hundred dollars for it. This thing was like five something. Or four fifty. I think it was like five hundred. I don't know. So I'm showing y'all some more expensive shit. Um, we're going we're gonna to see if the sound shit works. Like I told y'all. Or if it doesn't work. And I'm going to show you why it's important. But we're not going to do. We're not going to do it for a long time. We're just going to check it out okay so what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna put this down i have a speaker here where i can monitor the the sound if you can hear that so that's cool you sound great all right so let me turn that off for now so like i have everything hooked up some bug is crawling down my face and i can't stop it a mosquito bit me on my uh, my my slightly exposed ankles, cause I thought I was being cute today and I wasn't. So let's do this, y'all. We got the microcosm. So what we need to do is plug it in. So I go down here and get the plug that you guys can't see, and I take the cord and I attempt to see how long it is. So, it's right here. So, I might have to stand up, y'all. And then I realize, god damn it, on the microcosm, it's on the other side. So, I'm going to have to turn it this way. Because how dare I try to do shit and it works. Okay. So, now the back of the microcosm is here. I take this plug right here. And I plug it into the input. Because that's where my instrument is going to be. I turn the microcosm off. Turn it back on. Turn it off. Make sure it works. I take the left and the right. Plug that into the back of the microcosm. And I take the microcosm. Jesus Christ. Man. I don't even know why I'm wearing white shoes in the grass. This is why I don't wear white shoes. But guess what I'm doing today? Wearing white shoes. Now, all of a sudden, this is the longest cord on the planet that's under every single piece of shrub out here that would like to pull this microcosm off the table. Okay. Now I have the cord. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to run this cord into this unit. And you guys aren't going to hear me again. And this cord wants to play games and put itself over this other cord. Okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Artifon, which is a guitar. And um, I'm going to do a sound check and I'm going to run it into here. So you guys can tell me what you hear later. Peace, y'all. Thank you for joining today's tech show. So as you can see, it sounds bad. Because I heard it. I don't know why it does it. It sounds bad. Let's see. Oh, maybe because that's not plugged in. Hold on. Give me one second. Give me one second, y'all. I'm not going to do this to y'all. Because audio, this is how important audio is. Now, you probably heard that noise because this thing is on the floor. Give me one second. We're going to plug the Artifon, which is a guitar, into it. We're going to plug this into the phone, the iPhone. Damn, it's hot. Let's see if this one's on. Okay. One of these phones should work. I got a temperature warning on the other one. It's that hot out here, y'all. And I thought I was away from the sun. So this is what we do. I'm going to plug it in. Let's see if we can jam out for a second. Okay, I don't know what I don't know why I did it. I don't know why I did that. All right, I'm gonna turn the art. I turn the art of on. Oh lord, this is ridiculous. Okay, let's plug it in. See what it sounds like. 